357 Magna versus 357 Sig, and what I have today is some Underwood ammo. The 357 Sig is a 124 grain jacket at hollow point, and the 357 Magnum is a 125 grain jacket at hollow point. I'm using my 4 inch barrel Smith and Wesson 686 for the 357 Magnum, and my 5 inch barrel MP40 with a conversion barrel from KKM. And the reason why I like to use these platforms, you know, I get a lot of discussion and debate on this, but I just want to set the record straight here. I use a 5 inch pistol compared to a four inch revolver, mostly because they fit the same size and same roll, but also because the bullet travel in the barrel of this five inch pistol is almost identical to the bullet travel in this four inch revolver. So it is a fair comparison more than what you typically see. And so many people get on here and say, you lose all your muzzle power and energy and everything out the cylinder gap. But the truth of the matter is, on average, you're losing 50 feet per second per 1,000 feet per second with 125 grain bullets. It's very small. That's 5%. Sometimes you see 1% or 2% loss in some of the studies that I've done. So we're going to see how 357 MAG compares to 357 SIG. We'll go through the chronograph, of course, to verify these numbers, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. Then I'm going to do my 10% clear ballistic test. We have our four layers of denim followed by three inches of clear ballistics to represent hitting a pectoral muscle, followed by a quarter inch MD up to represent hitting ribs or sternum and to more clear ballistics. We'll do a shot with the MDF to represent a chest or sternum hit, and we'll do a shot without it just to kind of represent a gut shot. And then I'm going to shoot from a little distance at my full-size steel silhouette to see what kind of practical accuracy we can get with these guns. So let's get started with this test. All right, first up we have our 357 Magnum 125 grain. I like underwear because they load a pretty typical 357 Magnum. Um, that's pretty typical to your off the shelf ammo, but a little bit better. So let's see what we get. Five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph, 125 grain, 357 mag. 1515. 1453, 1488, 1431, 1440. So that's a true 357 Magnum in every sense. 357 SIG, 124 grain. Let's see how this will do. 1547, wow. 1502. 1497, 1531, 1517. It beat, it beat the power of that 357 Magnum and with probably half the recoil. That's pretty impressive. Let's set our ballistics job lock with these. Now, the only thing that might happen here is we might get a slightly skewed test because I believe that the 357 is a XTP billet and I believe that the 357 SIG is a nozzle bullet. I'm not really sure, so that might kind of change the outcome of this, but that's pretty typical that you see that because nozzle bullets are very common semi-auto cartridge bullet, and you don't see a whole lot in revolvers. So let's set our ballistics gel block and see what we get. All right, we have our four layers of denim, three inches of clear ballistics, a quarter inch MDF into more clear ballistics. 357 Magnum, let's see what this will do. <laughs> Let's try our gut shot now. All right, no MDF, just our gut shot. Let's see how this will do. Let's go take a look. All right, so that's really impressive results. With that velocity that we're getting, this is definitely the right bullet. Because sometimes you get not enough velocity for an XTP and it kind of over penetrates. And sometimes you get too much velocity for something else and it just fragments to pieces. But this is the perfect bullet for this because what we're looking at was with our MDF shot, we got a penetration of about 17 and a quarter inches. With no MDF, we got a penetration of about 16 and three quarters inches. So we're right in that zone of where we want to be for penetration. We have good expansion. So that's pretty good. Um, here is our MDF impact. 
we can tell it's expanding a little bit right away and there's actually little lead fragment fragments i saw right here so it's hitting that hard enough to do that so let's try a 357 sig and see how that compares all right 357 sig through our four layers of denim and quarter inch mdf let's see how this will do <laughs> let's try our gut shot now it is such a weird phenomenon because the recoil feels closer to a nine millimeter but the effect i'm seeing is like a 357 magnum it's kind of hard for my brain to compute it all so that's interesting um let's see how we do with just our gut shot all right let's go take a look All right, first of all, I do want to show this. That's a pretty impressive hole through there. And this, this right here is our MDF shot on the bottom here. And what we're seeing here is an acceptable penetration. We have a whole bunch of the MDF drug all the way up into the bullet. I don't necessarily see that very often. Um, it just went all the way the whole track. So it's fragmenting a little bit. We see some copper fragments in there and we penetrated to about 13 and a quarter inches which is just totally acceptable and with our plain gel shot we got a penetration of about 14 inches and we have a bunch of fragmentation in there and all of that so what i can see from this everything about this suggests that it has that quote unquote 96 percent one shot stop capability that's what we've seen with our semi jacket of hollow point test stuff like that and it's actually doing it with a little bit more power than typical, you know, current 357 Magnum ammo. And on top of that, I could easily see how a follow-up shot would be super quick and easy with this versus a full-powered revolver. Everything is looking like one of the best defensive cartridges I've ever seen with 357 SIG. So let's shoot from a little distance and see what I get for practical accuracy. All right, so because of recent events that have happened in the defensive world here. Uh, I'm gonna fire from 40 yards at my full-size steel silhouette. Um, I'm gonna fire 12 rounds or so uh, from each platform just to see what I can get from 40 yards on a full-size steel silhouette. So I'm gonna start up with the 357 Magnum, see how that does for me. Grip wasn't quite as high as I want it to be, but after that reload, just kind of, kind of try to do in the moment type shooting there. Did all right. 357 Sig. Now the difference I can see with this is possibly get a second shot faster than I could with that 357. So let me try slow and just see how this does for me first. Let me see if I can get one a little bit faster because I know if I would have kind of double tapped with that revolver, I probably would have missed one. So, let's see if I can do it with the 357 SIG. I gotta make the first shot though. <laughs> For some reason, I'm not hitting that first shot. There we go, that's kind of what I wanted to see. It's shooting a little bit. Uh, low for me I think all right so you still got to kind of be patient and aim even with something like this um, for me it's kind of hard to tell because this is basically my favorite gun I shoot the most and even though it has a lot of recoil I'm used to the timing of how it feels and recoils back down so it's kind of hard to compare it to the M&P because this, even though this fits my hand well, it's still an auto and it kind of fits my hand weird <laughs> in a little sense. Uh, but it is something that takes a little bit getting used to for me. So I'm going to say here, 
you know, his comparison to a 357 Magnum, absolutely the 357 dig did in, 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 in all practical purpose. Now, if we were to take that and put it in a rifle, these two rounds in a rifle, no, I don't think so. I think that that 357 SIG, instead of 1500, we'd probably be at like, I don't know, 1700, and that 357 Magnum would probably be getting up there 2000 feet a second. So 357 is more powerful. However, in handguns, it's not more powerful you're just having a lot more efficient round and you're still getting all that 357 magnum effectiveness and because you can take that effectiveness and put it in a semi-automatic pistol that's huge because throughout all of my channel testing one of the biggest things that i've said is that revolvers are more reliable and they are revolvers have more stopping power and they basically do and you have six rounds and it's a good stopping platform it's kind of hard to argue and say that this isn't better because when I got 16 rounds in this, it has less recoil. And because it's a bottleneck cartridge and it's going in that chamber and we're not getting any jams, uh, this is kind of a game changer in some sense, a 357 SIG. I wouldn't say that, you know, 16 rounds of 40 would compare to the six rounds of 357. I certainly wouldn't say it for nine millimeter, but this, this has some stuff I don't want to admit to. So that's what you get today. It's pretty impressive little cartridge. So that's what you get. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.